Hi, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a mega menu with inside SharePoint Online. The first thing I'm going to do is navigate to my SharePoint site. Now, there's a feature of um, a hub site, which is known as the hub navigation bar across the top, which is allows us to build out a mega menu, which is then used throughout our intranet. Now, if you're not too sure what a hub site is or how to enable a site as a hub site, there is actually a separate video on my YouTube channel which um, will show you exactly how to enable a site as a hub site to get that site navigation bar to appear across the top. Um, however, we can also create mega menu drop downs on the site navigation bar, which is specific to the current site that we're looking at, which is here. So I'm going to show you um, how to do it across the top using the hub navigation bar. As I say, you do need to have your, your hub navigation uh, enabled as a hub site first. Um, um, but the same way that we do this will also work for the site navigation bar as well. So the first thing we need to do is we click on the add a link button across the very top. And then we'll see this pop out bar which appears on the left hand side. Now this is the kind of um, the wizard which will guide you through creating um, the, the navigation now, the first thing we've got is this drop down here, which says choose an option. Now, there's a couple of different options in here. The main two that you need to be aware of to build out your mega menu is link and label. Um, associated hubs and chat hubs, that gets a little bit more advanced, a little bit more complicated when we're thinking about an architecture which contains multiple different hub sites. But for this uh, example, I'm going to try and keep it fairly simplistic. We're just going to be focusing on link and label. Now, what the difference is, is link is... Um, something we can provide a hyperlink to. It's it's when you scroll over it, you'll see uh, like the little finger kind of will appear because it knows uh, that it is a clickable hyperlink. Whereas actually label, you'll see graze this out and it's actually just a label. It's a piece of text which is going to be used um, uh, as a way of categorizing the links which sit underneath it, the child links that sit underneath it. Um, so the first thing is I'm going to create a label, and let's say for example I'm going to I'm going to create a couple of different things across the top um, that, that we, we typically see on an internet. So the first one uh, might be say for example departments, so links to department SharePoint sites. Um, the next one um, I'm going to create as a label might be news, so links to news pages and sites for example. And then the next one might be, for example, um, apps or websites or, or something like that. So linking out to useful kind of links. So now if I click on save, you'll see across the top now, I've got these labels up here. Now they're non-clickable um, labels. So we're expecting to put things underneath them, child links underneath them. So let's focus on, for example, news. Let's create some uh, links underneath them. So if I click on edit and then... If I click on the little plus underneath news, you can then see I can add in links. So by default, it will set to the link. And let's say, for example, I'm going to link to BBC News. So bbc.co.uk. And the display name is what is going to appear um, on the actual um, drop down of the mega menu. Now, I can also choose to open a new tab, which just means that it'll open a new tab across the top of my browser and it'll keep this original home page uh, as a separate tab. Um, so I'm just going to click on OK. Now, the thing is, if I now click on Save, what will happen is the BBC will just appear next to News. It's not actually aware that it should be underneath it at the moment. So I'm going to go back into Edit. And then click on the three dots next to it and then say make sublink. And then you'll see that it indents it underneath news. Now you can tell how the architecture of the mega menu is put together by where the, how far right these links are underneath uh, their parent. So I know BBC News now will sit underneath news. So if I click on save, I can now see a little arrow appears next to news and underneath that I've then got BBC dropping out. Now, this is a one stage uh, mega menu, uh, tier level mega menu at the moment, but we can actually have a two tier level as well. So we can have something uh, potentially above or beneath this BBC. So let's say, for example, I wanted to hover over news. I wanted to see, say, UK news links and then links to BBC um, and, and things like that. And then maybe I wanted to also have next to it uh, US news. So links to maybe like CNN, for example. So all I need to do is click on edit. And then uh, I'm going to add in a new label. So I'm going to click on link and then label. And I'm going to call this my UK news. 
I'm going to move this up by clicking on the three dots and click on move up. And then I'm going to make BBC a sublink of UK news. So if I click on the three dots there and then click on make sublink, you'll then see this is the three levels. So we've got news, UK news, and then BBC. So that's the three tier level of hub navigation. So if I click on save, you'll now see I've got UK news and BBC. Now, just to show you that again, we'll do that for the US. So we'll click on the link, click on label. We'll create a US news. I'm now, um, I now need to promote this. Now, one thing that's worth noting when you're creating your, your mega menu in SharePoint is when you add in a link or label, it will always add it uh, at the layer that, that's above it. Uh, so if I've just added US news, it's taken the same layer level as BBC. So if I was to click on save now, it would be alongside BBC. So I need to click on the three dots and say promote sublink to bring it to the same layer as the UK news. So it's on the second layer now. And now I'm going to create uh, a link to cnn.com and give it a name, so CNN, and then click on OK. And again, it's taking this layer, so I now need to make this uh, go down a layer. So click on the three dots and then say make sublink. Now click on save, and you can see here we've now got UK News and a link to BBC, US News and a link to CNN. Now, that's basically how you create your mega menu. And within reason, you can have as many kind of layers, uh, well, I say layers, you can have up to three layers, but you can have as many kind of headers and links underneath them as you like within reason. Um, but I would suggest that you try and keep it um, to maybe no more than sort of four or five sort of columns, rows um, uh, of kind of headers of uh, links. And within that, maybe no more than 10 links per kind of header, although it starts getting a bit too overwhelming. Now, you can customize the experience, as in you can show and hide links to different groups of people based on security groups. Now, to do this, we need to enable the site navigation uh, audience targeting. So when I click on 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 this, then click on save, it will close. But I just need to click on edit again. And then when I go and edit these links now, you'll then see there's another box here which says audiences to target. Now, all I need to do is type in here the name of a security group. Um, let's see if I've just got one here. Um, I don't think I've got a security group just to hand at the moment, but if, if, if you type in the name of a security group, you can see you can have up to 10 audiences within this. What that basically means is then that link will only show to people who have uh, access to that security group. It doesn't mean that it's going to stop them or restrict their access to the actual link because, again, this could be a link to external thing like BBC News, for example, and it's not blocking them from accessing BBC News. They could go to a browser and type this URL in. What it's doing is it's hiding the link from them in this navigation bar. Now, this can be really useful for a number of things. Um, it can completely customize the user experience. So, for example, under departments, rather than just saying departments, it could say my department. And then underneath that drop down, uh, it could it might have, say, 50 links to different department sites. But actually, they're all audience targeted to security groups. So you only see the link to your specific department. So it cuts that kind of list down. So rather than looking for a list of 50 things to find your specific department link you only see the one you should have access to it might be that you have a tab across the tab across the top that's called managers toolkit for example and links to things which are specific resources and and useful links for your managers and only managers should see it so you could show and hide that dependent on if they were in the managers security group but there's all sorts of different things you could do it based on locations and regions or job roles or um, office locations there's all sorts of different reasons why you might customize that user experience of the navigation. So I hope you enjoyed that video showing you how to build out a SharePoint mega menu. Um, and we touched a little bit on audience targeting as well. If you like the video, please do um, subscribe to the channel for further uh, Microsoft 365 related content. Um, drop this video a like. And if you've got any questions, use the comments feed below. Thank you very much.